My name is Baldwin. My name is John McCain. I'm running for Congress. I think the hard work part, I'm talking about the knocking on doors, convinces people that you're ready to work for them. You know, I saw the video, but I wasn't ready for the voice. The high-pitched John McCain, young former Arizona Senator John McCain, during his first campaign for Congress back in 1982. A young man just retired from the Navy trying to introduce himself to the people of Arizona. And joining me this afternoon is a woman who was there, Marla Shiner, Senator John McCain's first press secretary, Thank right? You, so much you were there on that campaign. Enough. Great having you here. You wrote a book called McCain's Navy, Class of 82, and let's get into that. But let's start with John McCain, a front row seat to the beginning of this huge uh, political run for him, right? What was that like? Absolutely. What a privilege and an honor. And now after my 40-year career and after retirement, I'm looking back at what preciousness that was. And I wanted to convey with an asterisk, McCain's Navy class of 82, it really was a catbird seat. And you know, Troy, what I think we can look at as an examining what leadership is all about I started looking at, through the lens of the Navy's leadership principles, what he was doing when he was first establishing that campaign. And he and Sidney had moved back to the Valley after he took naval retirement. They wanted to become a couple, you know, in, enriched and involved in local community things. And as he did that, he attracted people to him that really exemplified those values. And, and you taught with Sidney McCain. You taught with Sidney McCain. And so that's how you knew them. Yes. They bring you on board and, and they say, well, they want to run a political campaign. So what did you think at that point? Oh, I couldn't wait. I mean, my goodness, I was a journalism major and this is exactly what I had hoped. I wanted to leave teaching, going to the corporate career. And, you know, to, to become knowledgeable about him and his past. I was 26 years old, he was 47 at the time. He had already served, you know, in, as a Navy liaison officer for the U.S. Senate. He knew so much about, you know, the armed services, and I needed to get up to speed. So Cindy kind of pointed me in the right direction, reading some books, going to the library, that kind of thing. And those are the things that we do to establish our early careers with, with who we're serving. And you thought he was special, you told me. As soon as Absolutely. you saw him, you thought there was something there. What, what was it? Well, you know, the very first time I met him, after I had gone to their wedding, I noticed how he would look at people, and he would just really connect with his eyes and with his heart and listen. And that really struck me, and it always is something that I've taken throughout my career, and I hope as a mentor and as mentors out there who have been mentored by him, they took from him as well. He really connected with who was speaking to him and wanting to convey what they felt passionate about. And what you have in here are the 11, it's what is it, Navy 11 leadership principles, Indeed. right? And so th there's 11, I won't read all of them, but uh, you said number seven is the one that you really like. What is that one? I kind of like that set the example. And you know, Troy, what I saw in him as well as the other parts of the congressional staff is no one would ask others to do something they wouldn't do themselves. So here he was needing to go door knocking, and we had a formula for that, where we were going to go, how we were going to do it. Somebody needed to run that, but somebody had to put down the shoe leather. And he was the example. Mm. In Cindy's book called Stronger, she draws out the fact that he won by 14,000 votes, and guess how many doors he knocked on? 14,000. Wow. So you got to you got to put in the Absolutely. work. Absolutely. All right, now let's look at his legacy now. And I think, you know, we talk about the McCain Republicans, the Chamber of the moderate Republicans. They seem to have kind of uh, I don't want to say disappeared, but their voices are quieter now. How do you think he'd react to that? I think he would be saddened, but he'd also understand. This is my guesswork. He knows that our environment has changed, or he would know. He saw it change over 40 years when he was serving us and campaigning for president. So when you take a litmus test and you figure out which way is wind, wh the wind is blowing, what are the sentiments today, the thing that I think is cohesive or the connective tissue between looking at leadership and how to connect with constituents or even from the boardroom and employees, it's taking a look at the quality of leaders that we have in place. And he would want to say, I hope, look at your own leadership and yourself. We have an honor, the honor of serving this country and for loving it and for appreciating it. So what are you doing to for, and for democracy today? Mm. Marla, thank you so much. The book is called McCain's Navy, available at Amazon, class of 82. Great talking thank with you. you. Troy. Thank you for coming in. Take care. All right. Tram, back to you.